Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to another great webinar in our, in our series. We have a lot of these posted on our website. I'm sure this one will make it on there also. This is something that a lot of my clients ask me about, um, especially right when you get your printer. And this comes up when you get your printer late in the day and you call me at five o'clock. So the techs are probably done for the day and you're anxious to get going and, and start printing. So we're gonna talk about Garment Creator today and um, settings to get you started printing. And, and Roy is our expert on that. So he's gonna dive into it. We'll be answering your questions. Um, if I think of something, uh, I might interrupt him and have him explain it a little bit better, but uh, we'll be answering a lot of your questions at the end of the webinar. So Roy, why don't you uh, get us started on Garment Creator? All right, well, thank everyone for attending today. We really appreciate your uh, patronage and uh, faith in us. Uh, the one thing I do wanna recap in what Jeff just mentioned, we do have other videos and Jay also mentioned as well uh, available. We did a full garment creator video kind of going over all the controls just in general. Uh, we had another one for light garments that we did, uh, pre-treating, and this one will be dedicated to dark garment printing. So uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is getting a successful print in Garment Creator uh, is gonna require a couple things up front. One is what shirt am I gonna start with, okay? Am I gonna start with a blend, 100% cotton? Um, what type of product am I gonna start with if it is cotton? You know, there's different manufacturers which dictate the weave, uh, how tight the weave is, uh, how smooth the, the fabric surface is. Uh, so all those things contribute to uh, the end result and how much ink it's going to require to get a good product. After having the shirt, if it's a smoother shirt, it's going to require less pre-treat. If it's more coarse on a weave, it's going to require more pre-treat. Uh, so having the proper amount of pre-treat on the shirt as well is going to be critical in making sure that you get a good print at the end of the day. So, so Roy, quick question. What would be an example? Um, when you say a coarse weave, I think of like Gildan, the heavyweight Gildans uh -huh. versus uh, a tighter weave would be like the, the um, cotton heritage that we print on, right? Yes. That's correct. And there are others like Next Level, Bella Canvas. Uh, there is the uh, District. It's also a pretty smooth surface shirt. So if you look at it from a visual aspect, that's the best way to do it. Uh, we are visual people. So let's go ahead and just take a closer look at the shirt. Don't just look at it from afar. Get right up into the shirt and see if you can see the, the weave is the dips, hills and valleys. Uh, that's gonna require, that's more real estate. More real estate requires more pre-treat and more ink to cover that surface. So getting back to say a Gildan, for instance, um, I can screen share and just give you a quick example of um, what I'm talking about when it comes to that. So I um, have uh, three brands here on the screen. Uh, they were all printed, pre-treated, the exact same. The one on the left, you can see the white base, how smooth uh, and how dense that white is and how well the color came down and printed on that white base. Uh, the one to the right, you can actually, if you look close up to the image, you can see the weave in the background of the image and that weave follows through into the white base. So in order to cover that to where I have a better base to apply my color to, uh, I'm gonna have to make sure that I get more ink on there. There's, it's gonna require more white ink to get that done. These were all three printed, by the way, on the standard level three for the dark garment. So keep that in mind. Uh, there was no change, and you can see three completely different results based on uh, the fabrics. So getting back to, I got to make sure I have enough pre-treat on them to carry the whiting. 
uh, and not have some of the white actually penetrate into the fabric and lose that white to where I'm having to add more white artificially, okay? That's the number one thing. Hey, Roy, I have, a, I have a client down in Mississippi. Well, he's more of a friend. And um, he prints specifically, like, uh, on the Gildan. That's his okay. thing. He doesn't um, print on anything else because he says that's what his clients expect. That's what they want. So he does a double pre-treat on those Gildans to make sure he has the, the perfect amount. Would you suggest uh, just adding more pre-treat or doing a double pre-treat on those? Uh, it depends on the shirt. Uh, and where it came from. Let's say, for instance, uh, looking at Gildan, if you're focusing on that, they manufacture in a lot of different countries. I think it's over 30 countries. So basically, if you have a shirt that comes from, say, Nicaragua versus Haiti, uh, I've had customers where the residual chemical and dye are actually repelling the pre-treat. Now, something like that would require a double pre-treat because the first pre-treat is going to uh, break down the chemical layer in the shirt while it's going through the curing process when that pre-treat turns to steam or the water does and starts shooting through the fabric it'll break that chemical down and then the second pre-treat is going to actually penetrate into the fabric better than the first pass but all in all just adding more pre-treat to the shirt is enough rather than going through a second process, if that makes sense. So or if I were it, on a pre-treat at much. a setting for a smoother shirt, then I would just up that setting a little bit more to add a little bit to the shirt. So getting back to you know what people say out there as far as pre-treat, you need to put so many uh, ounces or grams on the shirt uh, in order to get the proper amount of pre-treat. That is pretty much a myth because it, it it's based on the fabric itself and how much pre-treat it's going to require to cover it. Like a, a hoodie is going to take more pre-treat than, say, a Gildan or, say, a Cotton Heritage shirt. So as you get to a smoother surface shirt, that shirt is going to require less pre-treat, especially if the shirt is uh, designed to work with the DTG process. I think a lot of us out there are really trying to just use anything and get a good print off of anything. But I think the more we focus on the products that work, the more the manufacturers are gonna come back and make products that do work better in the DTG arena. That's Gildan has already moved in that direction because they're losing a lot of business. Right. They came out in January with an enzyme wash product where they're pulling that residual chemical and dye out of the shirt and making it receptive to the pretreatment process. So they're charging more for that product as well. So, you know, as we continue to move down this road, if we focus our money in the right direction, because at the end of the day, we're manufacturing a product and we want the least amount of headaches as possible. If I'm a business owner and I'm doing everything and I'm knowledgeable and I know what's going on, that's one thing. But if I have employees coming in and out the door, I need to be able to have a system that they can just go back there and follow a system and a procedure that's going to work day in and day out with no issues. Right. I think that's the biggest thing that occurs is people are trying to save money by using a cheaper product like, say, a Gildan standard shirt for two bucks or if they're really high volume, I hear people get them for 180 a shirt, something like that, which if you're buying at that volumes, you can get some of these better shirts as well into the mid two range or maybe high $2 range if you're buying in that kind of volume. And I guarantee you with headache, the amount of pre-treat savings and the amount of ink savings at the end of the day is going to offset the difference in the shirt. So it doesn't make sense to, to buy a cheaper shirt just because. So okay. anyway, not to spend too much time on that, but I, it is definitely important. You got to start out with a decent shirt, uh, proper amount of pre-treat, and then uh, moving into Garment Creator on what type of print modes that you're going to go from there. So uh, gotcha. I'll go ahead and uh, bring Garment Creator up just to kind of go through the basic settings here. 
So in Garment Creator, as I mentioned, we've gone through all the buttons and everything. We're gonna just stick to our basic print settings here today uh, for gar garments, which we have a total of three. Uh, number one, we have a, a black colored t-shirt, use garment black. So that setting is gonna remove my white under base where my black ink is going to print and also remove the black ink, allowing my shirt to be my black. So the better uh, my shirt is, as far as um, density of the black, because some black shirts, to be honest with you, aren't really black. I mean, they could be like a charcoal gray, or they, you know, even after a couple washings, they kind of bleach out and they're really not looking as black as they should. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But the next one would be a dark colored setting, t-shirt setting standard. That's gonna be for anything other than black and black shirts that have an image that I'm printing that require black ink, which I'll show you kind of an example of that. Uh, the last one would be a dark colored t-shirt where I'm just printing white ink. Uh, the thing with Garment Creator on the um, dark colored shirt or the black colored shirt, when it goes through the process of printing, uh, it's gonna separate your white base and your color and print in two passes or three, depending on what level you're uh, printing on. But the dark colored t-shirt white is going to just go straight to the white base uh, when it's done with that, it's going to stop printing and kick the shirt out. So it isn't going to pause and say, okay, well, I'm just printing white. There's no color going down. And it takes a couple seconds longer for the machine to kick the shirt out if you just print white type on a black shirt under one of these other modes. So the, the dark colored white uh, shirt allows you to just pick up type uh, like here where it says Epson, uh, and just print that and get a nice coverage in a single pass or a double pass because you really only have um, two options here, which is similar to what you have available in the F2000. So you have the two passes of white or you have just your single pass of white and you still have the ability to add more white base. Okay, so keep that in mind. And if you're doing the two passes, you can still add your pause in there if you'd like to do that as well. Okay. So getting back to what would be the difference or how would I know if I am printing on a black shirt, should I use the black colored shirt setting? Well, I would venture to say that probably 85% of the designs out there will print fine. Uh, going to a black shirt setting to where you can save the money on the white base and the black ink uh, that is on top of that base to let that black shirt be my black. Um, but let me show you a, an example of why I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. While you're pulling that up, Roy, I'll say too um, that I notice when I'm able to use black or use the shirt color black in, in, instead of printing black, it also feels a little bit better because it, it breaks up the graphic a little bit. Yeah, in some cases, definitely, it does do that, uh, especially if you have large areas of black. Um, but when you have a lot of detail that requires black as far as a shadow effect, uh, like chrome, silvers, uh, black, uh, in itself that has a lot of different detail as far as gradations within the black. If you clearly see between these two images here, uh, the left is using garment black. Uh, you can see the motorcycle loses all the detail in the engine, the pipes, the tires, the spokes, and then on to the right, you see adding the black ink back in uh, allows you to pick all that um, detail back up. It almost looks like the engine on the motorcycle looks like it's modeled or melted or something on the left uh, in, the, in the way that it looks. Uh, the next image shows an opposite extreme. So excuse the details of the photograph here. But uh, here on the left is using my shirt as my black. And on the right, I'm adding black ink in. So clearly in the hair, 
uh, softens the hair on the left hand side versus the right. Uh, the top and the armbands have a lot more detail. In fact, you lose in the armpit area all the detail on the right. Um, things that stand out too, the shoes on the left look a lot more uh, detailed than they do on the right, uh, as well as the, uh, the bracelet there with the spikes. And then the other thing is the guitar itself and showing the guitar strings on the left you can clearly see them. And on the right, it's, they're almost disappearing into the background. So, uh, and this is basically a good uh, image also to show what type of gradations that you can print if you want to have uh, more ink added to the shirt to give a, a different type of look to the image, more of a, uh, a piece of artwork or a photograph uh, versus more of a t-shirt uh, silkscreen look. Hey, Roy, I, I just would like to point out those are amazing uh, examples. The detail and how they look are, are awesome. But I think for most people, they're not going to, like whichever one you print and you hand to the client, they're going to be like, wow, that looks amazing. Un unless you were to show them a side by side and point out those subtle differences. Yeah. It's going to be that one client you need to know this for that one client that's going to come in with his piece of artwork and it has to look perfect on the shirt. So you need to know it. Yeah. But I would think for most people, either one's going to look great, right? Well, uh, well, you could clearly see on the motorcycle one, you, you, they wouldn't look as good. Okay. So that is an instance where you would be adding the black ink back in and spending the extra money. But like I said, in most cases, you're going to just go with a black shirt and yeah. use garment black as your setting right. versus running in a standard mode and adding black ink back in. Gotcha. Okay, so uh, the other thing to keep in mind is whether you're going standard mode, adding the black ink back in, or using garment black is your settings and really what's happening in the background. Um, so, and having the, white, or the, the right amount of white base, I think is the biggest thing um, that is questionable, I guess, when people are going to print. Uh, but if you look at the various settings, you know, Epson has a, a one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, the difference between all of these uh, aren't that great um, as far as differences. So. Number one, uh, if you look at the double strike print or that check mark being there, that means it's going to hit anything with white on a second pass with the color. So any white type, any highlight white areas within an image, it's going to hit a second time. Um, but on the level one, I'm actually putting half the amount of white ink down that it normally puts down for all the other settings. Okay. And the amount of color ink, I'm also uh, putting uh, the m bare minimum down. The one thing to keep in mind with inkjet technology and understanding what's happening here is looking at the DPI and the passes, okay? Uh, the DPI is the spot size of the droplet of ink, okay? And it's going to create a dot of ink on the shirt. Now that dot of ink is going to create the optical illusion of color. So if you took a magnifying glass and, and looked at the shirt, you would see all these fine dots. Uh, you can't see it from afar, you see the image. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, if you're looking at 1440 by 720, uh, DPI means dots per inch. So if I were to take a one inch span and have 1440 even sized dots to fill that one inch. That's the size. So the bigger the number, the smaller the spot of ink. But it's going to lay down four passes, which means the head's going to go back and forth four times and drop four droplets of ink to create one circle of ink on the shirt or one spot. Okay. So keep that in mind as we continue to talk. So every time I do a pass that's costing me more money, it's, it's applying more ink. And on the uh, color, 
it's doing two passes, which isn't adequate to even get a good image. The bare minimum is going to be four passes. So if you look at level two, still doing the same color here, but the level two is putting the same amount of ink as level three, level four, and level five. The only difference between level three, level four, and level five is the amount of color that's being put on, which I can go to now, is if you look at the amount of color here, isn't adequate to get a nice vibrant image. So if I go to their default, um, that's gonna be the same white base as the level two, but I'm putting the four passes with the 720 by 720 instead of the 720 by 360 uh, spot of ink on that white, okay? Uh, the level four is the same white base except I lose my highlight white, so all this type is not gonna get hit a second time when it does my color pass. So if I don't have any white type and it's just an image, I could turn that off if I want, but the thing is, if it's turned on and there is no white to hit anyway, it's not gonna do it, okay? So it's kind of a mood point to even have uh, the level four. It just adds more uh, confusion sometimes. Uh, and then level five, same white base as level three, but it has the same color laid down as level four, uh, which is the 1447 to 28 passes. Uh, and then level six. So. This has the uh, same color lay down as well. And level six, instead of having the double strike, it's actually laying down the eight passes, but it's doing it twice. Now, when it goes through the process of going from level five white or level three white or even level two white, uh, which are all identical, when I go to level six, during my two passes, it's not gonna lay down 100% of what it laid down on the level five or three or what have you, uh, it's gonna lay down about 75% of that amount of white. And it's gonna do it twice, okay? Uh, so that's gonna give you more coverage on the shirt. So if you wanna create more of a thicker, rubber, rubber, uh, rubberer feel to a shirt, uh, like some of the silkscreen ones, that you might get, uh, you can do that by adding two passes of white. Uh, but there's ways to get around that. Let's get back to the preview that I showed you of uh, the nice smooth shirt or say a Gildan that we were talking about that has a, a thicker weave. So I'm gonna overcome that obstacle is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add more white down here in my ink density. And that kind of segues into, you know, these settings that Epson has. You know, I know there's a lot of rip manufacturers out there that have a lot of different things. Everything's customizable. You can also customize your own settings within Garment Creator as well. But these settings here are just like a paint by number settings. It makes it easy. It's a kind of, uh, you know, it's really not a rip, it's a glorified print uh, cue that has all these settings that are basic. But I can override any one of these settings and change them. I can increase ink levels. But if I'm doing that, keeping in mind, why am I doing that? Am I, am I kind of combating an issue that doesn't exist because I'm not... Uh, in tune with really what's going on with my shirt and how the ink's being laid down, which is kind of critical. Uh, or am I just adding more ink because I think it's the right thing to do? I think at the end of the day, learning your uh, garment creator software and investing in yourself and spending a little bit of money. See, if I take this image right here and I reduce it down and I set it up here in this upper box here, I now created four quadrants that I can do for testing, okay? Uh, makes it easy for me and less expensive because I can not only print four uh, prints on this side of a shirt, I can flip the shirt over, pre-treat the second side, do the same thing. So I can understand what these settings do, okay? 
And these are just starting points, really. Uh, typically, your default level three for most good quality shirts that are pre treated properly is going to be a sufficient uh, level to print on, and you're going to get a sellable shirt. Uh, if it's not sellable, there's other things involved, whether you know, the, their weave is too thick and it's going to require more white face, or you don't have enough pre treat on the shirt to begin with. Hey, okay, Roy, so go Roy, ahead. If you don't mind me just uh, jumping in here real quick, you mentioned um, you, you, you compared this to a rip and, and you kind of went over that real quick. And, and I just wanted to mention that I, I've been seeing a lot lately. It's mostly just from one um, or two people in social media and they're, they're trying to make a splash out of it. But they're talking a lot about um, how rips are so much better than using garment creator. And I don't want to go too far down this path because maybe that's a webinar for another time. Um, but how, what, what is your expert opinion? Do you feel like garment creator can compare to a rip software? Is it worth the thousand dollar plus investment? Um, I, I think the two biggest things that the rip manufacturers push is saving money on the print. Okay. At the end of the day on your white base, you have just as much control in Garment Creator as you do on any other RIP or any other platform that you could use out there to drive this machine, okay? Uh, I think understanding that within Garment Creator, and I think getting back to what I mentioned on the paint by numbers, Garment Creator is free. You can download it to many as computers as you'd like. It's not licensed. And because it's free, and you don't have any skin in the game, a lot of people just look at it as, oh, I just download it and I bring up one of these print quality uh, you know, tabs and I just hit print and I see what I get without actually understanding what's going on in the background. Now, if I spend a thousand dollars on something, you know, you know you're gonna sit there and you're gonna invest your time because you've invested your money to learn that product. It's a more um, it require settings. It requires you to go through and set up your basic setup. Uh, some of them will say, hey, we'll give you some setups to start with, and then you can fine tune them from there. But you're on your own. You've got to figure that thing out. So it forces you to learn. And I think that's the biggest thing uh, is that when you're forced to learn, then you're going to go out and learn and see all the differences, see what's happening, run the tests, spend the money on the shirts, and do what I'm saying that you should be doing already with Garment Creator, because Garment Creator still has all the same controls as anything else. The only thing that Garment Creator does not do that some of the rips do is remove other colors from the image because the shirt color is a different color. But I kind of question that because black is more consistent than any other color. So once you take a blue, red, what have you, and you press it, you cure it, you throw it in the wash, it's going to change color. And that color may affect the print in a, in a diverse way. So I don't see that as a positive myself and a, that much of a factor in saying, hey, that's why I bought the rip. I think the biggest issue where people want to buy the RIP is because of the control of the white base, which clearly, if you understand your ink density settings down here, with the white, you can do the same things as you can with any RIP. Okay? So, Roy, in your opinion, can it really save money by reducing the, the white ink? Well, that gets back to the shirts again. Um, let's say, for instance, um, let's just go back for a second here, and I'm going to reshare this image, okay? We're going to focus on these two shirts right here. Now, the one on the left clearly has an awesome white base, okay? And I can clearly tell you that that ink that's on that shirt, and that's printed at standard level three for this specific design, I could reduce that amount of white ink and save money, okay? Now on this image, if I were to print it and I've already gone through this cost justification, 
if I printed it on full size, which would be a 12 inch by 15 inch image, and I cut my white base in Garment Creator back to 15, minus 15%, 15 I will save 70 cents on this image, okay? Now on this shirt, I could do it and get away with it. But the shirt on the right, I'm already sucking air. Uh, there's no way I can reduce my white and I'm still at the same setting. This shirt on the right is gonna require more whiting. So in essence, if I double pre-treat this shirt and it's already costing me you know, 40, 50 cents in pre-treat because I'm double pre-treating it because it's a thicker weave. And now I'm gonna, I have the ability to save 70 cents on the left knowing my white base, and this is part of uh, understanding Garment Creator and being able to run tests and investing in yourself, investing in your business. And I think that's the key to success here, but ultimately it's gonna cost me more than a buck on the right side to get this shirt to even look close to the one on the left. But go ahead. What question, was that question? Roy. Um, so the one on our left is the Cotton Heritage. That's the one that looks pretty good. Is that correct? That's correct. And the one on the right, uh, which one is that? Um, I believe it's a Gildan, that specific shirt. Okay. So that's what we can expect when printing on a Gildan. And was, and was that one double pre-treated in your example? No, no. Okay. So that's they were pre-treated the same, printed the same, to see the difference in results just based on keeping the same setting. And, and you said we would have to bump up that white on that guild and the one on the right. Would you do that just by increasing the white ink or would you do a double pass on the white ink? Well, that's, that's the issue here is if I go to level six is do I have to? And I think getting back to the paint by numbers and not understanding garment creator is most people just jump up to the next level not really knowing why, just thinking, oh, because it's got a higher number, I'm gonna get a better print, which isn't always the case. So I'll go through that a little bit more here on the garment creator. So basically, um, again, like I said, I can go up here and go to level six if I wanted to and put two passes of white. But let's look at this as a cost perspective, okay? Just so you understand really what's happening. So if I look at this image, right here, which is a standard size image that we would typically print. I'm gonna estimate this job just to break it all down so you guys can see live how this all affects everything. Okay, so $1.75 to print that image. Okay, not including my shirt. Cost. Okay, now if I change it to level five, uh, it's the same white base. The only thing I'm doing, and the reason why I'd want to go from level three to a level five anyway, it's it's a finer resolution on my color, my print quality on my color, okay? Or if I want to add a little bit more density to my ink, because this is going to be eight passes of ink, eight droplets of ink versus level three being four droplets of ink, but they're a little bit larger, okay? Uh, the cost difference is not going to be that great when you're just dealing with color. So I was at a buck seventy-five on that. Whoops. Now, um, just to be clear, this one's at uh, one eighty. When okay, you're so level five went up. Excuse me. Sorry, Roy, I didn't mean to talk over you, but um, there was a question I thought it was a good one to um, put in here. You're not including the pre-treat in that cost. That's just the ink? That's just the ink cost, period. I'm not including the shirt, the pre-treat. Uh, typically, a dark shirt, if I'm doing a full platen, we're running about, for your average shirt, uh, between 23 and 28 cents a shirt, roughly. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So if I'm on a lighter shirt, like a light tan, and I'm putting a white base down, I don't need quite as much pre-treat. I could probably get that number closer to 20 cents. If I'm running on a light garment that I'm just pre-treating, I'd be you know, 20 cents or a shade under. 
for light colored pre-treat just for printing colors only, not for a white base, okay? So this is just cost in ink, which is really what we're talking about at the end of the day if we're comparing to a rip anyway. So my cost went up five cents just to add um, a higher resolution of color print on top of the white base, okay? If I go and do my two passes of white and I get my cost on the level six, this is where the jump is gonna occur because I'm actually putting down a lot more white. Now, is that really helping me at the end of the day? And we're gonna discuss that a little bit more in a second. But if you have another question as well, what was that? I'm just saying you on level six, it's just a whole second layer of, of white ink. Yeah, yeah, look at that cost jump, that's crazy. So I went from uh, 175 to 180 to 237, okay? Now, if I were to look at the image I showed you with the motorcycle, because that's a solid square of ink, your jump is going to physically be over a buck, okay? And that's where the cost factor really, uh, it gets exasperated. Okay, and where some of these, you know, people say, well, all oh, you can cut back on your white and getting back to the example I showed you on a good shirt, you can, okay, if you know what to look for. And I think that's the biggest thing that I tell people when we're, you know, going through a training is it's up to you to put a pause, even for five seconds to inspect your white bases, get an idea of what they should look like before the color comes down on the white. Okay, so, um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But the last thing I want to talk about is if I went with level three, back to level three again, I'm going to uh, share something else in a second here. Did you have anything else, Jeff? Um, no, I was just uh, waiting to hear what you had to say, but you know, um, you know, we've had a few questions that we'll go over when you're done. Okay. Okay, here we go. So I want to talk about the white base, kind of driving that home a little bit. So if I stop sharing that. Uh, the next thing is I'm going to share white bases, okay? The one thing is when we look at our ink density in Garment Creator, and I can't stress this enough, when you're dealing with a shirt and you're not getting a good white base, what is your option? To jump from level three all the way to level six is really all there is, unless you understand what's happening and that you have control of your white base. So typically... My normal white base is going to create almost a grayscale image of my image, okay? So you can see on the left here, it says normal, which is just standard level three setting. And then to the right of that, I have a 20, plus 25%. Now, depending on the image, it, the breaking point is 25 to 35%. And the only way to figure that out is to actually throw that number in there. Okay, um, and see where you're at. So what happens between normal and that magic number of 25 to 35 is it's using the same amount of white ink, but it's taking heavier areas of white ink where, you know, it's laying down too much and it's redistributing that white ink to the areas that it didn't put enough. Getting back to, let's say, a Gildan, uh, where there's areas where in the weave where it didn't have enough ink. Well, if I redistribute some of my ink, I'm going to get a better lay down. Or from that 25, 35% number, once I exceed that, now I'm adding more ink incrementally as I continue to do 100% coverage when, when I get to 100. Now, 100% coverage really means that I'm covering every single color droplet of ink that's gonna come down, I'm making sure that I got a solid white base down there, okay? Now, is that gonna put twice as much white ink down on the shirt? No, not at all. <clears throat> it's actually a lot cheaper than running level six, 
okay, which I'll show you in a second. So if I go back to this and I go to, um, Dharma Creator, okay. Now I'm at level three, you see I'm there. Uh, if I go and add 35% more white, my original cost at level three for this design was $1.75, okay? So at 35% more white, you would automatically think, oh, I'm probably adding 35% more white. On this specific image, it's a break even and I'm redistributing that white, okay? Uh, so, well, it's $1.86. So on this particular design, the break-even number is probably about 30%, okay? So that's adding a little bit more white base uh, and a total of 11 cents more versus the um, level six, okay? Now just for to see the difference, if I, go to 100% on my white. Let's just go to 100% so you can see, which is gonna make a bigger impact than going to level six because it's going to make sure I have a more even applied white base. Now, do I have to do this on every print? No, if I have a good shirt to start with, level three, like I said, right out of the gate is going to be sufficient. But if I even go 100% more white, which is gonna give me a, a really good shirt uh, on a gildan, so to speak, I'm at 193, okay? Which, if I went to level uh, six, I was at $2.37, okay? So that's gonna save me money. It's also gonna save me time in production. Uh, two reasons. Because if I go to level six, I gotta put a pause. I'm gonna add a third pass, okay? So when I'm redistributing my white, because it evenly does it, as you continue to increase in number, what I need to also know, which leads me to our next thing to think about, is my color going down. Is my white ready to receive color ink? If my white is wet or shiny looking and it hasn't completely started to set up, then my color droplets that are coming down, and these are small droplets, are gonna penetrate into that white where it's wet and I'm gonna lose that color ink, okay? And a lot of times I see where people add color, they're adding white, and they're just fighting the whole dynamic of the DTG as far as laying ink down and putting more ink unnecessarily because they're not allowing enough time for that ink or not having the right uh, application of ink across the fabric to have it set up properly. The other thing that could cause this to happen is not curing a pre-treated shirt properly. If the shirt is damp, it's not going to absorb the water that's carried with the ink into the fabric, allowing that ink to set up fast enough. It's kind of like a sponge. If I put a sponge on a counter that's wet, I'm moving water around. If I wring that sponge out really good and I put it on the counter, I don't even have to move it. I could just set it there and it's going to suck the water up in it. If my cotton shirt is completely dry, it's going to pull the water out of that white and allow that white to set up faster, which is going to require little or no pause and allow my white to be ready to accept color. Okay. Hey, so Roy, that's a um, key Roy well. just real quick, I wanted to point something out. And I know we're kind of getting short on time. We got some um, questions to answer, but I've made this mistake and I've had clients call me and ask me this. And, and I think it's because exactly what you were talking about, if your white ink is still shiny or wet, and it's pretty obvious when it's dry or when it's wet, there's a, a definite difference that you'll see when you're printing. But if you put your CMYK down on that, and then you cure it, what you'll, you'll notice um, little specks of white ink poking through your image. And people call me with all different theories of what's causing that, but 
Uh -huh. That's because there's too much wet white ink before you put down your CMYK, is that right? Well, that's part of it, yes. And part of it is the moisture in general. Uh, the first thing that happens when that platen comes in contact with that shirt is the water is gonna turn to steam. And that steam is gonna shoot through the fabric, it's gonna shoot through the ink. So we need to make sure that that water has been absorbed into the fabric and it's only the pigments that are sitting on top of the fabric at the time of cure. If you're purposely adding more ink, because there's a lot of reasons why someone wa might want to create, you know, a work of art on a shirt. I mean, those are popular, they sell. I want to add a lot of ink. Well, pull that shirt off the DTG and don't put it in the uh, heat press or even the tunnel dryer let it sit for two or three minutes, set it on a table to the side, then go back and cure it. Allow that water to uh, absorb into the fabric. And again, as long as your shirt is pre-treated and cured properly, that will happen a lot faster than it would if the shirt isn't cured properly. So that could be a contributing factor. Perfect. Well, are we at a good spot to start taking questions? Because we are... Uh... We have about 15 minutes left. Yep, there you go. Um, so basically the last thing I wanted to just cover is uh, the color settings down below. Uh, if you wanted to, or actually in white management, which typically we don't change this that much. I've had to change it a couple times. It's basically your white base re being reduced uh, to where when your color goes on top, there's no white lines around the outer perimeter. If you need it reduced more, because you see a white line, you can increase it to three or four. Or if you have real fine type and you're losing part of that, uh, those fine lines, you can decrease it to two to one. I've even heard of people trying to get it to zero, but ultimately it's a battle at that point to make sure that you don't have any white lines showing. Uh, and then the last thing is the color settings. For colors like this, any vibrant colors, you know, the, this thing, uh, setting works real well. If you look at the screen, if I were to click on a two here, you can see how vibrant the colors get. Uh, this is a setting that I use a lot if I have a lot of colors uh, in, in the image and there's not a lot of dense colors or a lot of whites. Uh, as long as it's all mid-range stuff, uh, these settings add to, you know, the vibrancy of the print. And it's something that you can, you know, use when you want to or things of that nature. So, uh, and it doesn't cost more money, really. It's within uh, saving a penny or two or costing a penny or two to, to use these settings. So it's not like you're going to spend any more money on the image. So at the end of the day, um, I guess that would be about it. Uh, and getting back to the white and saving money, uh, it's all can be done right here. Uh, like I said, I can reduce my white, I can increase my white, and still have the same flexibility as the uh, rips out there. Uh, the thing with the color settings here, the color does lay down incrementally. So if I add 10% more color, uh, it's not truly adding 10%, like say 100% would be doubling the amount of ink that's going down. Uh, that is not the case. So typically, on the color, if I want something better, I don't really mess with that number. I would just jump from a level three to a level five. I know it's gonna cost me a couple cents. As I mentioned on this image, I think it changed at five pennies. And I'm gonna have uh, a finer resolution of dot as well as more ink put down on the shirt and get a, get a sharper print in the process. So typically if I'm gonna print a photograph or anything with fine detail like that, I'm gonna automatically print at a level five. I won't even start with the three. Okay, and, was there, and I guess uh, questions and answers at this yeah. point, if anybody would like to. Uh, I'll through some of that. these, Roy, in the questions and answers, and then I'll go through some in the chat, but uh, I just wanna first say you covered some amazing stuff. I don't think you'll hear that from anywhere else in the industry. That's, uh, that's college level right there. Um, all right, I, uh, let's start with this uh, in questions and answers. Somebody said they only have a level one and level two in their options. Is that because that's for the um, F2000? Yes, 
That's correct. So not to uh, take those people for granted, let me just go through that real quick. So if I go to my level or my F2000 settings, you can see up here at the top, level one, level two. Again, the thing to keep in mind is level one is running at the same uh, white base as level four on the F2100 because you don't have the capability to have the highlight white. Uh, and level uh, two is the same exact white base and color is level six on the F2100. So you're not uh, losing anything on the high end. Okay, getting back to the level one is where to start out with. Um, and as far as the print color quality on the F2000, it doesn't even allow you to go to the lo lower settings. Your 144720 is the same color quality as level four, five, and six on the F2100. So it's not like, well, because I have a 2000, I don't have the capability. You still have the capability of increasing these numbers, uh, 10 passes, all the way up to 16 passes, just like on your light garments. Um, and getting back to the eight passes here, going up to the two passes, which would be on the level two, if I manually went through and did that. Uh, getting back to the 2100, uh, if I went up here on level five, I don't even have the, the ability, or I do have the ability, I didn't think I did. I can go to 10 passes or 16 passes on my color. Uh, and I do see a lot of times that people do this they will max out all these settings and they end up with these costs of images that are seven, eight, nine, ten dollars worth of ink on a shirt. Wow. Why? Because they don't understand the process. They're clearly putting too much white ink down and they're doing it to mask maybe under pre-treated shirts, uh, cheaper shirts that have a much uh, heavier weave to try to combat that. And at the end of the day, they're not approaching it the right way or adding color before the white base is cured enough to accept that color. If that white is really thick, I've seen white base that looks like someone poured paint on a shirt where you could see the fibers coming up through that, that white base because it's thick. It looks like someone poured a white out on the sheet of paper. In a situation like that, you're gonna lose maybe a third or more of your color ink droplets into the white ink. They will penetrate that white and you will lose that color altogether. It's a waste of money. You need to make sure that your white is, is setting up and is ready to accept that color and that color is gonna stick to the white and it's not gonna penetrate the white. So key factors in that. Okay. But getting back to the other questions. Sure. Huh? Um, some of these I'm just going to answer real quick. For example, is it possible to print on button shirts? Yes, we have special platens for that. Uh, you can go on the website and see them or talk to your salesperson about uh, those. And in fact, we have a new platen coming out. I don't know if you've seen it, Roy. It's going to be amazing for, uh, for button up shirts. Uh, we do have a list of recommended shirts that you can uh, get from us. We can email you. So um, you can email jeff.m at equipmentzone.com or terry at equipmentzone.com. Um, I think you covered the more, when you say more or less pre-treat, what does that mean in terms of settings on the equipment zone automatic pre-treater? Maybe you can tackle that. Okay, well, basically on the equipment zone machine, uh, more would be over five, so five or above. So let's say, for instance, if I'm doing a Gildan, standard Gildan uh, shirt that you could pick up anywhere, Walmart, what have you, I'm going to run that one probably at five and a half. Uh, if I threw a cotton heritage in the machine at five and a half, the pre-treat would be dripping off the shirt. If I put a Gildan in there, it's not. It's not gonna be dripping off the shirt because that shirt is thick enough to absorb that, that liquid. And that is why you're gonna need to add more liquid to a, a, a looser, uh, thicker weave than you are with a, uh, a thinner, smoother weave shirt. 
So okay. on a cotton heritage, I can actually reduce and go below uh, five uh, if you want to experiment with that, uh, especially if you're using the Image Armor Ultra Dark or using the Epson at a one-to-one -one mixture, I can reduce my setting as low. I've gone as low as uh, four and a quarter on a Cotton Heritage shirt, which is going to save me quite a bit of money on pre-treat at the end of the day. So again, it really depends on you. And, you know, I always add a little bit more just because um, if the pre-treater isn't spraying perfect at some point throughout the day, I'm, I'm compensating a little bit for that, if that makes sense. So, Thanks, Roy. Um, we have a lot of questions and we are um, close to out of time. So let's try to get to a couple more. I see okay. Ray has um, chimed in and, and typed in some of those answers. What is the ideal humidity level for our workroom for inks to dry and be applied. We're running at what, 45%? Yeah, uh, I tell people 40 uh, to 50% is ideal because it's hard to keep it at 45. Uh, and if you're in drier climates, we're in Arizona, um, if you get down below 40, you're pretty, you're, you're okay. Uh, it's not gonna cause an issue with printing per se. Uh, it's gonna create a health issue with the machine. So and head health is critical. So if I drop below 30, start approaching 20 and getting down into the lower numbers, I'm going to have uh, premature lot, nozzle loss due to nozzles uh, prematurely drying. Okay, uh, That's the biggest issue as you go into a lower humidity. So I'm going to have to stop my machine, do nozzle checks throughout the day, do head cleans, and that's going to cost me more money. Uh, it's going to cost me more time because I got to stop what I'm doing. I may waste a shirt or two in the process. It's just better to get a good humidifier, making sure when you do pick one, it's an industrial one and is not one that's built for a home uh, for someone that's sick. You don't want anything misting. Uh, the, the good humidifiers work almost like a swamp cooler where they suck up uh, moisture into a filter and uh, air blows through that filter with a fan to create humidity in the environment. So um, as far as on the high end, uh, the issue that happens is not uh, health of the, the uh, machine, it's gonna be printability. So when you get over 70% or up in those numbers, the ink will not lay down straight, okay? As it's coming down from the head to the fabric, that high humidity actually creates obstacles for the ink to come down straight onto the fabric. Uh, and if you did a nozzle check, it looked like a bunch of snakes instead of the stair steps. It's really easy to spot. Uh, only area I've ever seen that happen is in Louisiana in the summertime when they've had shows out there. Uh, other than that, I've actually never seen an issue with high humidity because typically people don't get that high in a building when you're running a heater or AC unit. Okay. You know, Roy, I have to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start calling you the professor because, man, that you just hit so many great things today that, that most of us don't know. And I don't think there's anywhere else in the industry that people are going to get this. Um, so there's a lot of other questions and there's a lot of questions about pre-treating. We have recorded webinars on that that you can go back and watch. And uh, somebody asked about um, our webinar with Craig Mertens. That's actually going to be on Friday. I'm really excited about that. So this is a little plug for our Friday webinar. You know, we do a lot of- I don't know, it's not on Friday, it's on, it's on Thursday, Jeff. That's exactly what I meant to say. It's on yeah. Thursday as it- <laughs> I, have, I have the date and yeah, the day, right just there. in case, just in case you weren't ready. Sorry to jump over you. Nope, you're right, and uh, I should know because right after that I'm flying to Idaho. So, <laughs> um, yeah, Thursday, and that's at the same time. This is going to be a great webinar because we're going to be talking a lot about vector graphics, um, where in the past we've done a lot on um, bitmapped images. So this will be really good. Um, anything else, Jay? You'd like to add before we wrap it up? I just want to say again, thanks to both of you. Uh, you did an outstanding job. Roy and Jeff, Jeff, thanks for moderating and asking some of those questions. For tech support, you can uh, reach out. I added Roy's equipment zone. Uh, sorry, Roy, I know that's gonna flood your inbox a little bit, but 
Um, yeah. You're just too valuable of a resource. Well, and the it's only thing I could say to that is if I am training or tied up, it could take a, a moment for me to get back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Absolutely, the, Roy. I was going to qualify that. The best resource is to call uh, in our office and put a tech ticket in, and you should get a response back uh, within a few hours or an hour. Uh, it, it could be a day for me to get back to you if I'm tied up with other things and customers. So, hundred percent, well said. I, I appreciate you. I was going to qualify it as well. This does not mean that Roy is uh, now officially on your speed dial and available twenty four seven. He is not. Um, but that's it, guys. This is our key contact information. We appreciate everybody tuning in today. As was stated in the chat, this session was recorded and it will be added to our recorded webinars on our website soon. Uh, so until further, until we meet again, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jay. And, uh, and I, uh, I want to interject one more thing. There was one other question on using a dryer, like a uh, industrial size heat gun. Um, I use one all the time. So that is something that as long as you're positioning it away from the mouth of the printer and running it across the surface uh, at diagonally away from the printer, uh, you can easily use that to start drying some areas of the white ink if it's, you know, you want to speed up production. The last thing I'd like to uh, mention, not to uh, jump in on Jay, this, would this, be I, I've been what? anticipating a webinar, and maybe you guys can all respond to that, is uh, doing something on garments in general and how to overcome or deal with different types of fabrics, dealing with blends, and doing some experimenting on how to change some heat pressure and time settings uh, on curing some of these tri-blends that are having issues with ink mi migration and working around that. So uh, that would be more of an advanced class, but if you guys are all interested, feel free to shoot Jay an email and uh, let them know that you are interested in that. Thank you. I like, I like that suggestion. Thanks, Roy. That was really smart. Let's do it. We're ready for some advanced classes as well. But thanks again, everybody. Signing off for now, this is Jay Bissell. Thank you, Jeff Warnenthaler. Thank you, Roy Huseman. Please Thank visit our website and register for upcoming webinars. All right. Bye. All right. Thanks again. You guys have a great